Janice, Kim, Angelina, distinguished guests, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, may I wish you a very, very nice good afternoon. It gave me great pleasure to join you here at the 6th University Scholars Leadership Symposium closing ceremony. My colleague was here when it was the opening ceremony, so two of us covering the beginning and the end. I'm also delighted to meet with such a distinguished group of promising young leaders from different parts of the world, as I understand it, almost 900 young leaders from 57 countries. And this is the sixth anniversary event, very important one. We are now witnessing how globalization has led to a boom in student and faculty mobility. Nowadays, excellent opportunities for study and research emerge beyond national and physical boundaries. According to a report by UNESCO, more than 2.5 million students are now studying outside their home countries. Where the top three student exporting countries are those traditionally categorized as in the East, namely China, India, and South Korea. It also expects that the number will leap to 7 million by 2020. Numbers aside, the pattern of student mobility has been shifted by the migration of economic gravity to the East as well. Definitely, the East has gained the attention most recent years. Some of them, including the US, Australia, and Brazil, have taken forward initiatives to encourage the students to study in Asia. A number of Asian countries aspire to become an education hub in the region and this the track. What I'm trying to say, other than the notes written for me to read, I would like to share with you on two accounts. The first one is how a leader grows and learns. More importantly, who are the significant others impacting, affecting leaders? May, may I just uh, use the, the, the part two first? I recalled after my university graduation, my first significant other was a gentleman by name of Alvin Toffler. His famous book in 1970, Lane, Future Shock. Not only I read his book about 100 times, but also I was able to make him through the text contact at the time, there's no email at the time. All the way, because of hard efforts, he became my life coach. Every time I talked to him, he only gave me a couple of statements. The statement is, Eddie, illiteracy has a new definition. Being illiterate no longer someone who could not read or who could not write, but someone who could not relearn, unlearn, and lifelong learn. This is a very interesting statement. When I look at the, the three E we are talking about, enrich, educate, as well as enlighten, isn't it truly representing the last word that I was taught? Lifelong learning. Every second, there should be some good learning. The learning was extended by my another significant other friend by name of Franken Cody. He was really, really a good friend until two years ago he passed away at the age of 80 off. He's a great friend because he reminded me a couple of principles to be a successful person, at least to be an effective person. First one relates to your life should continue every second, every day, to understand and to be understood. And this is extremely empowering statement. Think about what you are doing a week ago versus today, versus when you finish the, the programs here, and by the way, spare some time for shopping. <laughs> I think I hit the right thing, right? <laughs> and when you go back home, first thing is to, to try 
to let people understand what you have done, what you have learned today. One of the sharer actually mentioned about, hey, when I go back to learn about and share, what did I learn, whom did I meet and do follow up. This is one significant event in your lifespan. So try to maximize, optimize by sharing with others. Only when you share with others, you will act like a teacher. The best learner is to be a teacher. When you need to teach, you need to understand, you need to recycle, and you need to make sure it is understood. So that's why to understand first, you meet as many people as possible. I was in the private sector for my last 35 odd years of uh, corporate area life. There was one gentleman I met. He was a summer intern. I was with a city group at the time. We had a major IT revolution in, uh, uh, for the region, head office in Hong Kong. We spent millions of dollars trying to switch to a new system. But uh, instead of uh, uh, paying the big bill for the consultants, we asked the summer interns to be the front end to make things happen because if we don't trust someone, we don't engage them. If you engage them, you make sure you trust them. That's why we focus a lot on meaningful intention. So we empowered uh, this uh, group of five, and one of the five uh, interns told me, hey, you are the manager here, but uh, how many people you know in this organization? And I said, I know my boss, definitely. I know my peers, definitely. I know some of my people down, and that's why I know. He said, not enough, let me tell you, you should learn as much as you can and network as much as you can so he may have won. The few months in Hong Kong, he said he would make five friends a day. So he would take my job day after. <laughs> and indeed, he almost took my job. <laughs> but more importantly, he made a lot of friends and I said, what's the, what's the point of making friends? He said, I will make another point. I will learn one thing from each individual I meet. And he made it. He's so knowledgeable. The moment he finished the internship, when he was back to Kuala Lumpur, the Indian knowledge country, actually he got five jobs, very decent, a very expensive jobs waiting for him upon his graduation. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the attitude of learning. I'm talking about the attitude of to understand and to be understood. Here, importantly as well, that while you try to understand, you try to articulate who you, uh, what you would like to be remembered. It is another side of a leader. Leader is just not for your own consumption. Leader is uh, for the whole community, for your value to be delivered, for the whole community. So, to understand and to be understood. And last but not the least, we always say we would like to do the greatest thing, we would like to do great things as well. That's my third significant other person, Chief Collins, the book Good to Great. He wrote a lot of books thereafter, but I was only interested in two of his books. The first book was Built to Last. It was before your birthday. It's a, it's a long time back. That book be the bestseller for about 30 years. Many countries, many corporate corporations take that as like their own sort of a corporate book for every manager to know. Among other things of that book, among other things, I met Jim Collins five times, usually over the breakfast, or over the lunch, or right after his talk in a, in a private room and for exchange. And um, he told me, Eddie, just remember one thing. Greatness is very difficult to achieve. The moment you think you hit the greatness level, you lose it. What does that mean? Greatness is a matter of attitude. You need to continue to improving, continue achieving until the very, very last stage and still you are not there. Because only when you are not there, you know what is your target to work on as your uh, life goal. So these are the three significant others. My advice to you is, uh, have you found some of your significant others through this one way? I probably have seen at least three leaders I just mentioned, they have taken a lot of their time to make this event happening. They share their own perspective uh, their life, for life, as well as uh, for sharing for uh, success. This would be the part one I'm talking about. On the part two, 
how would I relate the leadership with uh, the place you are in now, Hong Kong? Because as a government officer, I need to talk about Hong Kong. <laughs> Hong Kong is a very strange place. 7.5 million people today. 16% of the people at age 65 and above. And then the labor participation rate would be around 66% today. In 25, 30 years time, the 65 years old population would become 33%. And then the young population portion would be continued down. Population would peak and then be dropping thereafter from 2019, 20 onward. And not only that, the labor participation rate would go below 50%. This is the analysis, this is a scientific uh, evidence, and then a research findings. I think many countries, many cities are facing with the same problem, aging population and so on. So what are we going to do? My brother, Matthew Chair, already mentioned to you from the labor uh, perspective, and I might want to hit a little bit from the education perspective. When I mention education, I would extend a little bit to manpower, not just uh, education per se. So don't be worrying about, I'm talking about primary school education, curriculum, games played in the kindergarten. I'm not going to talk about that one. For the education piece, we need to do a few things. One, what is the strength of Hong Kong that we need to ride on? There's a, there's a first point I would like to share. Hong Kong is a very strange place. Look at this place. There's no natural resources. It's simple as that. The only thing we have are people. The only thing we have people. Look at our history. Was it true in 2003, 2003, we were attacked by the unprecedented virus called SARS? We managed the whole thing within about nine months from unknown to become some as a location who managed it. Our doctors, actually professional doctors, coming forward instead of avoiding that uh, devil uh, virus in order to make it happen. The whole community is working on this one, including the police department, lending the most powerful big computer, trying to check, trying to find out and then we were able to manage the virus attack. Right after that, then we have the 209 uh, birth flu, another attack medically. We were able to manage flu on that one as well. And thirdly, on the 2008, the financial term came by as well. Everybody's uh, running aside, running apart, and so on, including my previous corporations I work for. But Hong Kong stayed cool, and then uh, we continue our GDP growth, and then I continue our sort of the uh, reserve in positive format, so on and so forth. Hong Kong is a place, interestingly, to be able to build from strength to strength. We are more used to adversity, but instead of uh, being fearful of the adversity, we face up to it. There's the courage to face up to challenges, the courage to face unknown. No wonder Albert Einstein said, future is uncertain, things around you is uncertain, the best way you can manage it is to create it together. So this is another thing Hong Kong is taking as a good lesson. We are not afraid of threat, we are not afraid of occupied movement, we would like everybody to learn from it and then move on. Building from strength to strength. This is the nature of Hong Kong as the first point of sharing. The second point is so, when, whenever you are in whatever situation, think positively. One thing I believe we've been able to address that is, we have a few words guiding our behavior. We would like to be inspired. That's why a lot of the Hong Kong people, kids or teachers or professionals, and you will see that one of the places in the world spending most of the time getting most of the revenue on advertisement, on traveling, is in Hong Kong. Every day you see a lot of newspapers putting up a lot of traveling advertisements because people here enjoy traveling. 
good than bad. Good things are people getting more exposed, knowledgeable. Bad things are if there's any major accident somewhere, we start worrying. Would there be people from Hong Kong sitting there or facing up to some accidents? So joke aside, the key thing is so we would like to be working around free work. Inspiration we need to have every day. Inspiration, we need to serve our partners to provide inspiration from teachers to students, from professors to students. That's part one. That's a 1.1. 1.2 would be aspiration. Just inspiration from external side would not be sufficient. This is the way we would encourage everyone to build your own aspiration. That's part two. And then the third part would be desperation and determination to act on your aspiration. That's exactly what Hong Kong is doing. That's why we are determined to make sure we are one of the best financial center in the world. We continue managing. We would like to hit the, uh, to meet the aspiration of our young people in terms of opportunities for university education. Ten years ago, we were criticized that we're lacking university opportunities for our students. It was, it was mentioned about 18% of the development age group be able to attend university education. I'm pleased to report to you today, this moment, the 18% became 46%, meeting the global standard 40. This is another way to address inspiration, and we have the determination to meet the aspiration and inspiration. That is the part two. Part three, the last big point I would like to make, another eye out here, is the integrity. Integrity is the key. When I was with the, uh, with the corporation, I had the opportunity to join in the creation of J.P. Morgan Chase, a big corporation. Look at the whole financial turmoil in 2007 and 2008. The whole world in the financial sectors, the orders are turning upside down. When J.P. Morgan Chase was just created, this is the only organization surviving gainfully from the financial turmoil. One single simple reason for that one is to take the integrity among each and every individual in the whole organization, and that became the key success factor. Hong Kong as well, a lot of the uh, countries, a lot of companies uh, locally or internationally, they would uh, prefer hiring people, talents from Hong Kong. This is one of the major factors. Very integrated, professional talent pool. Last but not the least, we understand war for talent is critical. War for talent is critical. I understand Matthew when he finished his uh, speech a few days back, there were some good questions as to, hey, it seems that this is a place to consider, so how to do that? Mackenzie's War for Talent Research made it very simple, the three key factors. A talent would be willing to stay or to go for a site or location or an opportunity for a simple three questions. How does it work here? Tell me what is it, how does it work? See if I like it. The second point would be, how can I contribute? This is a part two. So if I can see how can I contribute, why should I be here? Number three as to do I have a future here? These are all three questions. We are fully aware of the importance of these three vital questions for top talents. That's why in our various new initiative, we address that up front. I'm going to take a sort of, I'm not going to give you uh, some strict answer, but I would suggest you Wednesday next week, Wednesday next week, we will have a new website for you and for everyone around the world. We have updated every information one needs, questions one would ask as to any talent in any part of the world. How does it work here? How can you contribute? And do you think you might have a future here? In a website, I think the website is like a, um, Hong Kong welcomes you. Hong Kong welcomes you. And uh, I hope that, you know, at uh, a point you'll return to your home country and city, and then uh, organizers might be sending you an email 
I could have a souvenir for you today, but because uh, it's going to be effective only Wednesday next week, I'll run away for the uh, high technology, meaning I'll reach you by email to tell you the exact website. Take a good look at this one. If uh, I still cannot answer all your questions to consider Hong Kong is a place you would like to spend the career, build a career, and be able to contribute, let me know and I'll try to answer the rest of the questions as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a wonderful occasion getting together. I want to thank the organizers for making this whole thing uh, possible again. And uh, just judging from uh, all the faces, uh, very active, high energy and smiling, it uh, definitely would be a very successful one. I wish you all a very successful event. And again, don't forget to spare some time for shopping. Thank you very much.